The strength of genetics is also their weakness. Genes cannot be easily changed, which means they provide a powerful advantage in favorable circumstances and a serious disadvantage in unfavorable circumstances. If you want to dunk a biz basketball, being seven feet tall is very useful. If you want to perform a gymnastic routine, being seven feet tall is a great hindrance. Our environment determines the sustainability of our gene and the utility of our natural talent. When, your, when our environment change, so do the qualities that determine success. This is true not just for physical character but for mental ones as well. I'm a smart if you ask me about habit and human behavior, not so much when it comes to knighting rocket pro propulsion or guitar chords. Com competence is highly dependent on context. The pupil at the top of any competitive field are not only well trained, they are also well suited to the task. And this is why if you want to the truly great selecting the right place to focus is cru crucial. In short, genes do not determine your destiny, they determine your areas. In short, genes do not determine your destiny, they determine your areas of opportunities as physicians. As physician Gaber Meets notes, genes can predispose, but they don't predetermine the areas where you are genetically predisposed to success or the area where habits are more likely to be satisfying. The key is to direct your effort towards areas that both excite you and match your natural skills to align your ambition with your ability. The obvious question is how do I figure out where the odds are in my favor? How do I identify the opportunities and habits that are right for me? The right place we will look for an answer is by understanding your personality. How your personality influences your habit. Your genes are operating beneath the surface of every habit. Indeed, beneath the surface of every behavior, genes have been shown to influence everything from the number of hours you spend watching television to your livelihood to marry or divorce to your tendency to get addicted to drugs, alcohol or nicotine. There is a strong genetics component to how obedient or rebellious you are when facing authority, how vulnerable or resist you are to stressful even how proactive or reactive you tend to be, and even how captivated or bored you feel during sensory experience like attending a concert. As Robert Pelomin, a behavioral genet geneticist at King's College in London, told me it's now at the point where we have stopped testing to see if traits have a genetics component because we literally can't find a single one that isn't influenced by our gene. Bundled together by your unique cluster of genetic traits predispose you to a particular personality. Your personality is a set of characteristics that is consistent from situation to situation. The most proven scientific analysis of personality traits is known as the Big Five, which breaks them down into five spectrums of behavior. Number one, openness to experience from curious and incentive on one end to cautious and consistent on the other. Number two, consentiness, organized and efficient to easygoing and spontaneous. Number three, Extroversion, outgoing and energetic to solitary and reserved, you likely know them as extroverts versus introverts. Number four, agreeableness, friendly and compassionate to challenging and detached. Number five, ne neurotism, anxious and sensitive to confident, calm and stable. 
All five characteristics have biological underpinning. Extroversion, for instance, can be tracked from birth. It's scientific play, a loud noise in the nursing and nursing ward. Some babies turn towards it while others turn away. When the researcher tracked these children through life, they found that the babies who turned towards the noise were more likely to grow up to be extrovert. Those who turn away were more likely to be become introvert. People who are high in agreeableness are kind, considerate, and warm. They also tend to have higher natural extrusion levels, a hormone that play an important role in social bonding, increase feelings of trust, and can act as a natural inti- antidepressant. You can easily imagine how someone with more oxytocin might be inclined to build a habit like writing thank you notes or organizing social event. As a third example, consider neurotism, which is personality traits all people possess to various degrees. People who are high in neurotism tends to be anxious and worry more than others. This trait has been like to hypersensitivity of a ami- Amygdala, the portion of the brain responsible for noticing threats. In other words, people who are more sensitive to negative cues in their environment are more likely to score high in neurotism. As a third example, consider neurotism, which is personality traits. All people possess to various degrees. People who are high in neurotism tends to be anxious and worry about Worry, ab- worry more than others. This trait has been like to hypersensitivity of the uh, amygdala, the portion of the brain responsible for noticing threats. In other words, people who are more sensitive to negative cues in their environment are more likely to score high in neurotism. Our habits are not solely determined by our per- personality, but there is no doubt that our gene nudge us in a certain direction. Our deeply rooted preference makes certain behavior easier for some people than for others. You don't have to apologize for these differences or feel guilty about them. But you, but you do have to work with them. A person who scores lower on consciousness, for example, will be less likely to be orderly by nature and may need to rely more heavily on environment design to stick with good habits. As a reminder for the less conscientious reader among us, environment design is a strategy we discuss in chapter 6 and 12. The takeaway is that you should build habits that work for you, your personality. People can get ripped working out like a bodybuilder, but if you prefer rock climbing or cycling or rowing, then shape your exercise habit around your interests. If, you fr- if your friends follow a low-carb diet, but you have find that low-fat work for you, then more power to you. If you want to read more, don't be embarrassed. If you prefer a streamy romance novel or non-fiction, read whatever fascinates you. You don't have to build the habit everyone tells you to build. Choose the habit that best suits you, not the one that is most popular. There is a version of every habit that can bring you joy and satisfaction. Find it. Habits need to be enjoyable if they are going to stick. This is the core idea behind the fourth law. Tailoring your habit, your personality is a good start, but this is not the end of the story. Let's trend our attention to finding and designing situations where you are at the natural advantage. How to find a game where the odds are in your favor? Learning to play a game where the odds are in your favor is critical for maintaining motivation and feeling successful. In theory, you can enjoy almost anything. In practice, you are more likely to enjoy the things that almost anything. In practice, you are most likely to enjoy the things that 
come easily to you people who are talented in a particular area tends to be more competent at that task and are then praised for doing a good job they stay energized because they are making progress when others have failed and because they get rewarded with better better pay and bigger opportunities which not only makes them happier but also propels them to produce even higher quality work it is a virtuous cycle pick the right habit and progress it easy pick the wrong habit and life is struggle how do you pick the right habit the first step is something we covered in the third law make it easy in other cases when people pick the wrong habit it simple means they pick a habit that was too difficult when a habit is easy you are most likely to be successful when you are successful you are more likely to feel satisfied however there is another level to consider in the long run if you continue to advance and improve any area can become challenging at some point you need to make you sure you are playing the right game for your skill set how do you figure that out the most common approach is trial and error of course there is a problem with this strategy the life is short you don't have time to try every career uh, date every eligible bachelor's or play every musical instrument thankfully there is an effective way to manage this conundrum and it is known as the explore exploit trade off in the beginning of a new activity there should be a period of exploration in relationship is called dating in college it is called the liberals art in business it's called the split testing the goal is to try out many possibilities research a broad range of ideas and cast wide net after this initial period of exploration shift your focus to the best solution you have found but keep but keep experimenting occasionally the proper balance depends on whether you are winning or losing if you are currently winning you exploit exploit if you are currently losing you continue to explore 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 in the long run it is probably most effective to work on the strategy that seems to deliver the best result about 80 to 90% of the time and keep exploring with the remaining 10 to 20% google famously asks employees to spend 80% of the work week of their office official job and 20% on project of their choice which has led to the creation of blockbuster products like ad adwords and gmail the optimal approach also depends on how much time you have if you have a lot of time like someone at the beginning of their career it makes more sense to explore because once you find the right thing you still have a good amount of time to exploit it if you are pass for time say as you come up on the deadline for a project you should implement the best solution you have found so far and get some result as you explore different options there are a series of questions you can ask yourself to continually narrow in on the habit and areas that will be most satisfying to you what feels like fun to me but work to others the mark of whether you are made for a task is not whether you love it but whether you can handle the pain of the task easier than most people when you are enjoying yourself while other people are complaining the work that hurt hurts you less than it hurts other is the work you were made to do what makes me lose track of time follow is the mental state you enter when you are so focused on the task at hand that the rest of the world fades away this bland happiness this blend of happiness and peak performance is what at least what at least and performers experience when they are in the zone if it is necessary impossible to experience a flow state and not find a task satisfying at least to some degree what do i get greater returns than the average person 
we are continually comparing ourselves to those around us and our behavior is more likely to be satisfying when the comparison is in our favor when the comparison in our favor when i start writing at jamesclear.com my email list grew very quickly i wasn't quite sure what i was doing well but i knew that results seems to be coming faster for me than for some of my colleagues which motivated me to keep writing 